I allowed you to record. Awesome. All right. We're recording. You're, you're now allowed on your own call to record. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Joy. I got to hang out with Joy in Florida. Uh, I guess it was a couple months ago. I don't remember exactly when that was now, uh, but we had a blast. I think maybe a few of you were there. A few of you probably heard about it, um, but we had a great time. And so tonight, I'm just honored to come hang out with you guys and speak. Apparently, there's already been an intro, so you guys know who I am. Uh, so I won't redo the intro. Unless you're watching the recording, I guess you missed the intro. I'm Josh Coates. There you go. Go Google me. You can learn the rest, okay? Tonight, I was conflicted about what to speak on because I have a couple things that are really, really, really my go-tos. And as I was actually, my, my girlfriend's sick, so I was running some errands for her, getting her some stuff, and I was kind of just thinking – what do I want? Which one of these, which one of my, which one of my go-tos do I want to speak on? Maybe I'll come back and do the other one, Joy, now that I've built up the suspense for two presentations and I can only deliver one. But I thought I really, 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 really want to give this one specific presentation because it really is, in my opinion, up to this moment, the most powerful thing that I have learned in four years of life coaching, of mentoring and training thousands of entrepreneurs, including um, in your guys' company, I, I've mentored over 10 uh, different top 10s. I've mentored over 10 different superstar diamonds. I've spent, I've been really, really blessed to spend a lot of time with a really awesome, lot of awesome people and learn a lot of very valuable lessons, not to mention being a part of the John Maxwell team and obviously learning from him. And I just thought, you know what, if I've got 40-ish minutes with people, and that's the only thing I'm going to get, this is what I want them to know. Because this, I... I've kind of coined this as like my philosophy. Everything that we teach in the personal development world is something that we heard from somebody at some point. This is maybe the only thing that I've ever actually created myself. Everything else is just me repeating as every national wake up call is, as every training call is, as every book is. But every once in a while you come across something in life that's kind of like your aha moment that no one really taught you. It was it was really a matter of your own experiences and evaluating what happened and you realize something magical has been happening the whole time and you never had words for it. You never had a way that you had explained it before and all of a sudden it becomes plain as day and you just want to share it with the world. So what I'm going to teach you tonight, um, better be really good after that kind of an intro, right? What I'm going to share with you tonight is I believe the most valuable lesson that I have learned in 2017, the beginning of 2017, I was looking like that was so long ago, but I get my years mixed up. I was thinking back, why is it with thousands of people that I have trained in groups like the art of recruiting and the push life community and the art of leading and all of these different groups on team calls, webinars, speaking at events, um, at Summit and Super Saturdays across the country. Why is it that so many people leave the call and leave the training saying things like, well, I didn't really get any measurable results, but oh my gosh, I feel so much better. I feel so confident. I feel so much better about my business. And while all of us like to hear these things, I got sick and tired of hearing words like feel. I wanted to hear things like I got results. Here's my paycheck to prove it. Let me show you how my actual numbers are increasing. Let me show you that I paid you money for a training and I actually went and made more money. Not I paid money for a training and I left feeling a little bit more magical with another extra horn on my unicorn. I don't really care about making people feel better. I want to help people get results. And as I thought back of the people that I've helped get results, I've helped a couple people specifically go top 10 at the very end of the year. We pulled off miracles in 2015. There were like seven, seven different people that I helped go um, elite that literally in September were two stars. I helped them go from two star to five star elite from the end of September, which if you know anything about qualifying for elite qualification starts, in basically mid-November. So in about two months, we went from two-star to five-star and ended up going elite. Why is it that some of these people got these crazy results and so many other people just feel better? And I thought about it, and I realized the people that I've helped get extreme results 
were people who came to me with extreme goals. They came to me not with a, okay, so I want to do your training group and I want to increase from success club two to success club four. I've been hitting success club five consistently, but I'd really like to hit success club seven consistently. They weren't people that had these little tiny goals. They were people that came to me with goals they knew were impossible, but they wanted to go for it anyways. And I won't say that 100% of those people hit their goals um, because my girl Molly Asplin that I helped this last year went into the year at number 18. Didn't hit top 10. We missed it by a pretty long shot. But in the process, we doubled her numbers. Um, she had her first $10,000 month. We did a lot of really, really good stuff. And so here's what I want you to understand. The only way I believe, and I'm sure there's other ways, but this is, I think, the way people really get awesome results in their business. Anybody here, you sick and tired of making posts like I used my Beachbody money to buy groceries? Don't get me wrong, that's a great thing. And I want you to start there. But how many of you are ready to be like, I use my Beachbody money to pay for a vacation? Raise your hand. How many of you are like, dude, I use my Beachbody money to buy a new car? Raise your hand. I use my Beachbody money to quit my day job. Raise your hand. Okay, we got a, somebody's got, yeah, some people got two hands. You had crappy jobs like me. Totally there with you. Here's how. The word that I want you all to write down in all caps, it has become the word that I try to live my life by, the word that every single one of my training groups is now run on. And since then, I've gone from helping about 10% of people in my training groups a month get results to helping more like 40% of people in my training groups get results. That's a really big improvement. The word is urgency. Write it down in all caps, underline it seven times, put exclamation marks next to it, put unicorns next to it, put fairies next to it. This is a word that's about to change your life. It's called urgency. When I was thinking back to these people that I'd helped and I realized, man, all these people that came to me with these crazy goals, I'm talking on the first call, they're like bawling their eyes that I just want to make this happen. I don't, I don't know if I can, but it's what I'm talking. Those are the people that got results. And then I thought back to my own personal journey. Year one, I signed two clients. I made $500. That's when you're making one of those posts. Oh, my side gig was enough to buy groceries. I, don't, I mean, $500 of the course of the year bought me groceries like what? With, with three kids at the time, maybe like once or twice, right? But in year two, you wanna know what I did? I did something crazy. I had this big calendar. I don't use it anymore. Now I use a smaller one plus my assistant manages another calendar for me. But I had this big fat calendar. I'm not an organized person. And I just, if I was gonna be organized in any way at all, I needed it on a big fat written piece of paper where I could see it every single day. And at the time, I had maybe got up to like three or four clients. I said, I'm going to get this big fat calendar and I'm going to write a number at the top of the calendar. And that's how many clients I'm going to try to sign this month. And at the time I had maybe four clients. And do you know what number I wrote down at the top of that page for whatever, whatever, I don't know, would have been like maybe March or April, something like that. I wrote down the number 10 that I wanted that someone said 30. Sorry, I wasn't that cool. Not yet. <laughs> I wrote down the number 10. At the time, I had four clients. Is there anybody on here that has four coaches? You're looking at that maybe Ruby-ish, except we don't really talk about Ruby much, but you're around there, okay? I want you to imagine right now having four coaches or less and deciding this month you were going to recruit 10 more. That'd make you throw up. There's a reason I wear this on my wrist that says, let's puke together. I started talking about this crap and everybody started talking about how they wanted to throw up. Yes, it will make you throw up when you chase big goals. I said, I'm going to sign 10 clients. Now, I didn't stop there. From there, I said, okay, if I'm going to sign 10 clients, then I'm going to go through each week and write down how many people I need to sign each week. Now, in four weeks, if you want to sign 10 people, you got two, two, three, three, right? Two of the weeks, I need to sign three people. Two of the weeks, I need to sign two people. And if I did that, I would have 10 clients by the end of the month. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people like to set end-of-year goals. And in Beachbody, we even have people that set by summit goals. 
but very few people line up their monthly goals and their weekly goals with anything that would ever amount to doing enough to hit their summit goals or their end of year goals. We have people all the time like, I'm gonna go five star elite by the end of the year. Okay, what are you gonna do monthly? I'm gonna hit success club every single month. What? You're telling me that hitting success club five is somehow gonna get you to five star diamond by the end of the year? I don't know what you're smoking, um, but something that's not right. That doesn't line up. Hitting success club five means you are recruiting one, maybe two coaches a month times 12, at best, you have 24 coaches. 80-20 rule tells me that 20% of your people give you 80% of your results, which means if you think you got 24 coaches, you really got 4.8. Because everybody else is just saying they want to work the business, but they haven't posted on social media in like three months. They haven't worked out all week. You try to look them up on Instagram, they're, they're they don't even exist. You found like seven other people with their name. You can't even find them. When you say things like, I want to go elite, and I know that's not everybody. Some of you in here are like, hey, I want to go diamond. Awesome. You want to go diamond? Okay, cool. So let's set up some monthly and weekly goals that align with you going diamond. And if your goal is to go diamond by the end of the year, I'm about to virtually slap you. Because that is way too long to push for diamond. You're telling me that from March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, you're telling me it's gonna take you nine months to find eight people who wanna change the world? It's gonna take you nine months to find eight people? You're gonna recruit less than one person a month? Here's what you don't understand is the average lifespan of a coach is three to six months. By the time you get six months down the road, the people you recruited today, they aren't even around. Especially if you're only recruiting one a, one a month. Can you imagine the team energy that you have when you recruit one person? Welcome to the team. All three of us are here and we'll be adding one additional person next month. The month after that, we will add one more person. If you will just stick with me for two years, we will eventually have 20 people. And maybe you'll finally meet someone that you like and get along with and can be your success partner. Just stick around for two years. Now, if you're a brand new coach, please forgive me. I'm not really talking to you, okay? Success starters is a legit thing. Hit success club five, your first three months, you're a champ. I'll be incredibly proud of you. But if you've been doing this business for nine months, 12 months, 15 months, 20 months, and success club five is still your goal, tonight's call is about to change your life. Because when you give yourself permission to take it easy, guess what you will do? You will take it easy every single time. Has anyone ever said, I'm gonna try to wake up early tomorrow? Have you ever used the word try? What happens when you try to wake up early tomorrow? Eh -uh, never ever happens, am I right? What happens when your challengers say, you know what? I think I'm ready to do this. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give it a try. I'm gonna order me a challenge pack and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll try out the 21 day fix and see how it goes. Oh, you know they're screwed. <laughs> Just write them off right now. If anyone ever says about working out six days a week and watching what they eat and putting healthy food in their mouth instead of pizza and donuts and they say, we'll see how it goes, they're screwed, it's done. The only way it ever happens, this is kind of my other presentation, so I'm gonna leak my other presentation in a little bit. The only way it ever happens is these three magical words that show up on your program every single day. Decide, commit, succeed. If you haven't made a decision to do it, it's donezo. Because every single day you are fighting against the pre-programming that has been put in place your entire life. Your entire life you have been pre-programmed by society and your circumstances and your situations to be average. And you think that you are going to crawl out of average by saying things like, mm, we'll see what happens. John Maxwell says that I'll try is just barely, barely, barely better than saying, I hope it happens. 
when you say I'll try, you're not committing to anything. You're not making a decision that you're going to do it and you're not committing to the process that it will take and therefore you will not succeed. Do you want to hear something crazy that I make people in my training groups do? Here's where it starts. Everybody's about to either hate my guts or love me to death. The leaders are going to love me to death. Everyone else is going to hate my guts, but you're going to love me on Thursday. I have a new, a new phrase that I'm trying to coin. I need, I need to put it out there a little bit better to get it to take off. It's six days a week you hate me, one day a week you love me. And of course, that one day a week is Thursday. It's payday if you didn't get that. It's, it's not as clever if you didn't get it, but the one day you love me is going to be payday, okay? P.S., people in my training groups are doubling and tripling their incomes living by what I'm about to teach you. I challenge them to take their normal monthly goal and make it their new weekly goal. I know, there it comes, there it comes. There it comes, there comes the vomit. There's, this is when everyone starts saying, oh my gosh. See this whole let's puke together thing, I didn't even make that up. I just started teaching this philosophy and everyone in the comments started saying, oh my God, I feel like I'm going to vomit. Oh my gosh, I'm going to throw up right now. And I was just like, well, whatever, let's puke together. Let's do it. When you take what you normally allow yourself to do in a month and you decide to do it in a week, something magic happens. How many of you have noticed in your business you kind of tend to do some of the activities you're supposed to do, but not all of them until sometime around the 25th or the 28th. And then all of a sudden you go on an invite bombard to hit success club. Anybody feeling like being honest tonight? No, that's okay. If you don't have to be, I know how it goes. Around the 25th, everyone, why is it that when it's the last minute, we know that the way to pull it off, the way to pull off a miracle is to message everyone on the planet and find out if they want to join our next challenge group? Because we understand April's got it. We're in a state of urgency. And so we are forced to do the thing that matters. Now, here's the thing. When I said to make your monthly goal your new weekly goal, one of the first things that your limiting beliefs tried to tell yourself is, I don't have time for that. I could never do that. I'm, I mean, what does this guy think? I could just work all day and night. I don't want to be one of those people that works all day and night, never has time for my family. Here's the thing. I want you to write this down. Urgency creates focus. This is number one tonight. Urgency creates focus. I've got three points for you. Urgency creates focus. I've never, ever, ever asked one of my clients to work more hours. In fact, I usually encourage them to work less. Because when you focus on the right things, I don't need eight hours a day. I don't. I need two to four really solid hours, depending on what your goals are and what your schedule is. My first couple of years growing my business, it was about two hours a day. Now, of course, when you start signing 10 clients a month, which by the way, I started doing, and within three months of setting goals like that, had over 30 clients and went from making $500 a year to at that point making around two or $3,000 a month. And as the year progressed by October, I quit my job and had my first $10,000 month. First year, made $500. Second year, made $48,000 part-time. Third year, almost 10 x that. By living by this state of urgency. Because here's what's going to happen. If I tell everyone on this call, I need you to make five sales before you go to bed tonight. What are you going to do? Is anybody going to get on word swag and debate which font to use. Anybody? Is anybody going to get on Rona Design and spend 30 minutes deciding between turquoise and hot pink? Is anybody going to spend 20 minutes trying to decide on Snapchat if they should use the puppy dog filter or if they should do a voice change? You ain't going to think about anything. You know what you're going to do? If you do make a post, you're going to be urgent about it, 
You're going to be smart about it. You're going to say what you need to say and get off. And then you know what you do? You know what you're going to spend the night doing? If I say you make five sales tonight, you're going to spend all your time talking to people because you know that's the most effective way to make a sale. And yet, 80 to 90% of you spend 80 to 90% of your time doing anything and everything you possibly can to avoid talking to people. That's the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of your time gives you 20% of your results. 20% of your time gives you 80% of your results. And John Maxwell teaches if you will take the thing that gives you 80% of your results, and instead of spending 20% of your time doing it, spend 80% of your time doing it, you can blow your business wide open. So you know what I started spending all of my time doing? Talking to people. Why? Because I had a weekly goal. When I saw at the end of the week, I got to sign three clients this week. You know what it made me do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday? It made me message people and try to line up consultations and stop worrying about whether or not I needed to put a new video on YouTube and stop worrying about every single post that I made, although I still posted consistently and I still put thought into that. I just didn't spend all night thinking about a post. I spent most of my time talking to people. Now, how many of you get to the end of your day? I'm sorry. I know I'm a mean guy. I really am. I promise I'm a nice guy. I love you. I care about you. I just fixed my girlfriend a salad before I hopped on here. I promise I'm a nice guy, but I'm a little mean because I want you to succeed. How many of you get to the end of your day and you don't really remember with avocado? <laughs> There's no avocado in the salad. That was in the smoothie earlier today. No avocado this time. Sorry. I know I failed. How many of you get to the end of the day and you feel exhausted? Your brain is just torn into a million pieces because all day long, all you've done is think about all the different things you need to do. And all you've done is run around chasing shiny objects all day. Okay, did I get a post in? Wait, did I check in on my challenge group? Wait, I think there was something else that I was gonna do and then I was gonna, I needed to follow up with this person. And by the time you get to the end of the day, you don't know left from right. You don't remember if you even fed your kids dinner. You have just been a wreck all day and night. Do you know why that is? Because you're not focusing on the right things. In my training groups, we live by an app. And this is an app that I custom created for my, challenge, for my training groups. And I tell them, here's the thing. These are the business activities you need to do every single day. We're going to start off our day by planning out our day, which means we're going to tell our time what to do. We're not going to let our time tell us what to do. And we're going to do the exact right things every single day. And then you are going to put your phone away. You're going to put your computer away. And you're going to go sit on the couch and watch a movie with your kids. You're going to go to baseball practice or soccer practice or whatever it is and not think about your business all night. You are going to plan out your time and you're going to focus on the right things. You're not going to work all day and night. See, the problem is when we want to avoid specific things in our business, like talking to people, we find ourselves trying to create as many other ways as we can to stay busy and call it work. Thursday comes around and we are exhausted. We are tired. We are stressed out and we didn't even get paid for it. And I always tell people, I can handle being tired and exhausted when I make a ton of money. Today, I did a four-hour workshop for the art of recruiting. When I got done staring into that diva light for four hours, I felt like I was going to pass out. But I also had 100 people sign up for a $200 training group over the weekend, and I can afford to be tired because I can also afford to take a couple days and just rest and sit around and watch Netflix or do whatever I need to do to let my body recover. When you aren't making money, you can't afford to be exhausted and tired and take time off. Am I right? So I need you. See, you're trying to resist me because you think that I'm trying to pull out more time and more energy and drain you more and exhaust you more. And the truth is I'm trying to give you your life back. 
And if you would set bigger goals, you would be forced to do the right things and you would also be forced to avoid the wrong things. And for the first time, you'll wake up on Thursday and you'll be the one getting, you'll be the one getting recognized by joy for a rank advance. You'll be the one with money in your bank saying, hey, baby, where you want to go eat tonight? It's on me. You want to go get a fat, juicy steak? It's on me. You'll be the one that is sharing your testimonies, saying things like, I can't believe a year ago, I was just trying to get by. And now here I am over here paying for vacations, paying for trips to Disney World or Disneyland or whichever one it is. I can never remember which one's which. I know some people, whatever. You're wearing Mickey Mouse ears. That's all that matters, right? This is what happens when you create crazy goals that scare the crap out of you because now you're forced to focus. You have no choice. Number two, urgency breeds creativity. It breeds creativity. I have found with my clients so many ways to get incredible results doing things we never really thought to do. And it's not that they were really honestly that smart Be because we had a crazy goal. We just had to figure out, we had to figure out a way to make it happen. So guess what we did? We thought of new ways to make it happen. Some of the things that I teach in the art of leading, one of them um, is something that me and Raina did a couple of years ago on our push for top 10 and 16. And, and I apologize if I say our and we, like I was the one that did it. It was not me and I'm not trying to take credit. But when you work with someone that closely to hit a goal, it really does become a part of your goal too, okay? So I'm not trying to take credit for anything. But one of the things that we did was in the team page, every single time someone sold a challenge pack, every single time we gave them a shout out in the team page, we called it ringing the bell. It's something that I actually teach in my Art of Leading training. We ring the bell every single time someone makes a sale. Now, I'm sure we didn't create that. I'm sure she had had that idea before from someone else, but because we had an intense goal that we had to make happen, we needed people to hit Success Club, and we knew the number one way to help people do anything is to recognize them for it. It's one of the vital behaviors, recognition, correct? And so every single time someone made a sale, we rung the bell and we set a goal each month for how many people we wanted to help hit success club. And then we literally had a leaderboard that we posted every single night at the end of the day to show people where they were at on the success club charts. Not just once a month. We did it every single night. And that December we had 38 people hit success club. 38 PSSC. That means 38 of her personally sponsored coaches hit success club, which is something that I had never seen before. Now, now it's just a normal thing that we're all doing because I taught it in the art of leading. I'm sure she shared it in tons of threads too. But we had to get creative because we had to ask ourselves, how can we do this? You see, when you don't have an urgent goal, you don't have to get creative. You don't have to learn a new social media strategy. You don't have to get on the national wake-up call to learn from top coaches and figure out what the heck they're doing. And you definitely don't have to implement anything you hear them say. You can just keep showing up on calls and going, oh, nice call. I feel so much better. I feel encouraged. I feel happy. I feel wonderful. But you see, when you have an urgent goal and you don't have any other way to hit it, what it forces you to do is get creative. And you start listening to every single call saying, what's in this call for me? Is there something new that I can implement? Is there a different twist that I can take on this? Is there a different approach? Should I, should I mash this up? Should I be on Instagram? Should I be using IG stories? Should I be using Snapchat? I don't know if that's the best use of my time. Do I need to invest in Facebook ads? And you start actually thinking about these things and balancing them out. And to be honest, people who don't have urgent goals, you know what they do? Instead of thinking about where's the best place I could be, What's the most important thing I could do? Instead of prioritizing their time, you know what they do? They just try to do everything that everyone teaches and they fail at everything. You see, when you have urgency, you start listening with ears of creativity and you start going, okay, that sounds really, really good, but I don't know if that's the best use of my time. Let me, let me, let me look into that. Let me actually strategically think about what my priorities should be. Another thing that I should throw in here is that urgency creates priorities. 
Because let me tell you this, there are a hundred different ways to build this business. Now they're all based on the vital behaviors, but some people do it on their personal page. Some people do it on their like page. Some people do it on Instagram. Some people absolutely love IG stories. Some people absolutely love Snapchat. Some people use YouTube. There are lots of different ways. Some people are really good with attraction marketing. Other people just message the crap out of everyone on the planet. There are many different ways to do it. But when you don't have urgency, what you get really, really, really tempted to do is just try everything and not actually do anything. There's a really big difference between trying things, remember what I talked about earlier, and committing to doing things. And so what do you do? One week you're on IG stories, the next week you're, you're back to a like page, the next week you're messing around with your Facebook personal page, the next week you're on Snapchat. Three months down the road, you still haven't learned any one of those things. You haven't learned to dominate any of those things. I'm about to start working on a new book that I'm gonna be writing called Make Yourself Famous. And I'm gonna be talking about learning how to dominate. There we go, Andrew's got the Yoda coming out. I was waiting for, I was hoping someone would, would catch that, I love it. <laughs> I said it and I thought it, but I was already, I'd already kind of moved past it, I love it. But I, in this book, I'm gonna talk about choosing your place to dominate. In that if you try to be present in too many places, you're really not present anywhere. But when you can laser focus on one spot, for me personally, I laser focused on Facebook personal page until I dominated it. And then I learned Facebook ads and I learned to dominate Facebook ads. My next thing is going to be Instagram, but to be 100% honest with all of you, I'm going to be paying someone to dominate Instagram for me because I just don't have time to be in all those different places. But you got to take one thing at a time. And when you have urgency, you get really, really creative about where to spend your time, where to spend your focus, where to spend your energy. Last thing, third thing, and this is probably the most important thing you're going to learn tonight. And I don't say this in, in an arrogant way because I'm not the first person to say it, but it may be the most important thing you'll ever learn in your entire life. That's a really big promise, isn't it? I better really deliver on this one, guys. The last thing that I want you to write down is that urgency demands ownership. It absolutely demands ownership. I've never once met or mentored or listened to or read after a successful person that said it happened on accident. I've never known a single person that said, man, I worked my way all the way to the top and I have no idea how I got here. There we go. Somebody's got it on their shirt. Hashtag own it. I love that. I love that. It's ownership. How many times do we have our challengers tell us, I just don't have time to work out every day. And you're going, are you kidding me? It's on your TV. You don't have to drive to the gym. You don't have to get a babysitter. All you got to do is wake up 30 minutes early or stay up 30 minutes late. Like that easy. 30, 30, 30 minutes to look good in that bathing suit. You're telling me you ain't willing to do that? Well, what do we say? Beach body coaches are famous for saying things on Instagram like, the next time you try saying you don't have time, try instead saying, it's not my priority. Has anybody ever posted something like that? Come on, be honest. And it's truth. It is 100% truth. And so tonight I'm going to make you eat your own words. The next time you tell me you don't have time for your business, the next time you tell me you're not motivated for your business, whatever the BS that is, motivation, the next time you tell me, well, I just don't know, I don't, I don't know. Oh God, mean Josh is going to come out. I don't know how to invite people. I don't, I, don't, I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to start a conversation with somebody. You don't know how to, you don't know how to start a con. You just say, hey girl, what's up? Is it that freaking hard? You say, happy freaking birthday. You say, hey, I saw your social media post that your kid's having a birthday. Hope you're having a blast. What are you guys planning to do? You say, hey, I love the dress you were wearing. Do you mind telling me where you got that? Do you see how easy it is to talk to people? You can just Google right now how to start a conversation and copy and paste the crap you Google into a conversation with someone 
It is not that hard. The truth is, you want to know the truth? You're afraid. The truth is afraid of what the person on the other end is going to think about you. You're afraid of rejection. You're afraid that this is the weirdest one. You're afraid they're going to ignore you for whatever reason. Each body coaches see someone ignoring you as rejection. And I get it. You don't think that they were, you saw that their little picture came up and they saw your message, but they didn't even take the time to respond. So you feel your feelings are hurt. Why? Because one of your biggest fears was that people wouldn't like the fact that you're messaging them and they would think that you're spammy. They would think that you're scammy. They would think that you're salesy. And when they ignored you, it was proof to you that your limiting beliefs are right. And maybe you really don't have what it takes. Maybe you are that weird salesy person that everyone can't stand because maybe your in-laws said something at Christmas dinner about one of your posts. And it's been in the back of your head ever since. But for one second, I want you to imagine Let's get our heads out of business for a second. Let's get our heads away from something we're so emotionally attached to. And let's imagine for a second that you went out on a date night with the hubs or the wife or the boyfriend, girlfriend, or you just went out by yourself, whatever. For whatever reason, the kids are at home. You don't have kids, the pets, people you love are in your house, okay? And on your way home, you realize that there is smoke coming from your neighborhood. And as you get into your neighborhood, you realize that that smoke is coming from your street. And as you get to your street, you realize it's your house that's on fire. And your loved ones are inside. You drive down that street as fast as you can possibly drive. You go Oklahoma style straight up onto the front yard. You jump out of your car and run to the door. But somewhere in between the car and the door, you lost your keys. You don't know how. You don't know where they went. All you know is kids inside, door locked. I got no keys. How many of you find a way to knock down the door, bust through a window, get in that house? Of course, everyone is going to raise your hand. Why? Because it is a life or death situation. You want to know the honest truth? If you are not chasing your dreams and you are not living out your purpose and you are not creating the best life possible for you and your kids, the house is on fire and you are standing outside watching. Because the truth is, you have the key in your hand and you just won't put it in the door handle. Because you're too afraid of what people on social media think about you. You're too afraid that your mother-in-law or your sister or brother-in-law is going to think that, what are they, who do they think they are posting pictures of themselves all the time? I've got it before. Guy at church came up to me and said, you must really like yourself. I said, well, I mean, I do, but I mean, like, why would why, why'd you say, I mean, you're just posting pictures of yourself on social media all the time. When did it become a bad thing to like yourself? I'm not, I'm not really sure even how that's an insult, but you know what? That's what you're worried about. You know that people are watching you. You know that old high school friends or people you're going to see at church on Sunday or people you're going to see at soccer practice, you know they're watching and you think you know what they're thinking. And the thing is, even if you're right, who cares? When your house is on fire, do you really care what the neighbors think when you go ninja mode and freaking kick down the door? Are you worried about what anybody thinks about you? Are you worried what anybody thinks when you go Superman style diving through the front window? Do you really give a crap what anyone thinks? Are you worrying, oh my gosh, the neighbors are going to think I'm such an idiot because my kids lit the house on fire. They're going to think that I'm the worst parent in the world. Are you thinking about any of that crap? No. You find a way to get in. Let me just tell you this. Number one, many of you, many of you signed up for this business because you said, I need this. 
I've got a day job that I want to quit. Maybe your spouse has a job that puts tons of pressure on them and you want to relieve the pressure. Maybe you have medical bills. Maybe you have credit card bills. Maybe you just want to do something better with your life for your family. You said, I need this opportunity. Why? Because the house was on fire. When I signed up for my business, we were literally living paycheck to paycheck every single month trying to decide which bill we could afford not to pay. Going through all of our mail, okay, which one doesn't have a last chance or a last notice on it that we can put off till next month? Every single time getting gas, checking my bank account, thank God for iPhones, or I would have never known if I had any money or not. Every time going to get groceries, checking the bank account. I don't know what people did back when you actually had to balance a checkbook, man. I would have just been, I would have just been so screwed. But constantly thinking about money. Not in a good way, but worrying. My kids, I have two kids that have a birthday next month, and I want to do something really cool for them. And for many years, that was never anything that I could even think about. Christmas time was the most depressing time of the year for me. The time that everyone's supposed to be happy, I was depressed because I had no paid time off at my job. We had no extra money to buy Christmas presents. And I knew that the only thing Christmas meant for me was feeling humiliated that I had no money to buy my kids presents and I had to find a way to make up the time that I was going to miss for Christmas because I wasn't going to get paid to take the time off. That was my life. Do you know what I finally did? When I joined the John Maxwell team, I finally had a key in my hand to unlock that door. And I said, I will do anything and everything it takes to unlock this door and get my kids out. I'll kick down the door. I'll punch my way through a window. If I have to go Santa Claus style down the chimney, I'll find a way to get my kids out of this situation. And even if you're someone who you don't have the money issues, you say, Josh, we're doing just fine. We make plenty of money. Everything's okay. Well, that's another disaster. Because if everything is just okay, then you are pre programming your children to grow up and be just okay. How many of you tell your kids every single day, I just want you to grow up and be as okay as possible. I want you to grow up and be as average as you can possibly stand. Every single day that you don't live out your purpose and your dreams, you're telling them that they can't live out their purpose and their dreams because people don't do what people say. People do what people do. They're not going to go chase their dreams just because you say to. They're only going to chase their dreams if you show them how to. And every demon you don't conquer in your life is one, one more that they have to conquer in their life. And I've committed personally to conquering as many demons as I can so that my kids have less that they have to deal with when they get older. I don't want my kids to ever have to struggle with money the way I did. They can find, I'm sure other demons will come along that I didn't even know about. They'll figure those out as they go. But you better believe I'm going to conquer everyone that I possibly can. Guys, if you really care about your family, if you really care about your future, you ain't got time to whine and complain about the Facebook algorithm. You ain't got time to whine and complain that your upline ain't around every single second that you need them. You ain't got time to whine and complain that apparently Instagram is being oversaturated with people selling things. You ain't got time to whine and complain that most of the people you message ignored you. Welcome to life. You ain't got time to whine or complain about anything that happens in your business. The only thing you have time to do is get results. If 20 people say no, you message 20 more people. If 20 coaches quit, you find a way to recruit 20 more. If Instagram changes, you find a way to adapt. If the Facebook algorithm changes, you change with it. You become results oriented because you don't even have time to find an excuse. That's what urgency will do to your life. So here's what I'm going to challenge you to do tonight. If there ain't no homework, we just had a good chat. I want to see over here in the chat what your new monthly and weekly goal is going to be. When you have a goal, that you have to hit by Friday, 
guess what happens? You may be lazy on Monday. You might even make it through Tuesday, but I promise you, you will show up Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. When you only have a monthly goal, you get to be lazy for like 25 days. I want to see over here, right? That's right, Elizabeth. It is puke time. I want to see what is your new monthly goal? What is your new weekly goal? Give it to me over here. Two coaches a week, eight coaches a month. That's what I'm talking about, Teresa. Don't mind me. I'm going to chug a little coconut water real quick. ADSC, that's what I'm talking about, Joy. I love that. I love that. Andrew, you better hold her to that. He's getting out his pen and paper. He's like, dang it, I got to do something too. I want you to, I want you to just, just message her five times a day. Say, hey, where you at? Where you at? Where you at, Joy? Did you make it yet? You, you, you had SC20 yet? Hell, I'm half of that. <laughs> weekly sc10 monthly sc40 not even close keep them coming guys keep them coming and it doesn't matter it doesn't have to look like everyone else's okay creating urgency for your life isn't about trying to catch up or keep up with anybody else i just want to hear what's going to challenge you what's going to stretch you okay sc6 monthly sc16 good 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 month sc10 week one sc20 Keep them coming, keep them coming. I like what I see. Baby, baby, if you like what you see, I'm a simple dumb, 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 dumb. Oh, sorry, old Beyonce got in my head. <laughs> Random songs pop up in my head. Don't, don't, don't quote Beyonce. Uh, I really do feel sick now. Good, 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 good. See, I, I, I'm, I deliver on my promises, right? Okay, now. Keep the goals rolling. If you haven't put yours, keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. Here's the next thing. And this is actually even more important. What will you do to make that happen? Tell me. Tell me about it. What will you do to make that happen? Message everyone. I want to hear specific numbers. Joy, me and you need to chat, okay? We need to chat. <laughs> I want to hear. I'm going to take 20 invites a day. There we go. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear a specific number of something we're going to do every single day. 20 to 30 a day, April says. Keep it coming. Come on. Up invite numbers per day from three to five to five to 10, four to five days a week. Weekly SC5, monthly 20, 500 PV a week, 10 new contacts a day, 20 invites a day. Push Life app every day. That's my girl, Jen. Push Life app every day. Um, 20 convo starters a day, 15 invites a day. Message 10 people per day. Keep them rolling. Keep them rolling. Got one of my push lifers in here. That's what I'm talking about. 40 invites a day. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Keep them rocking. Guys, here's the thing. This is what you have to do if you want to succeed. If you want to really succeed. Every single month, you have to reset, you have to refocus, you have to come up with a new monthly goal and a new weekly goal. Now, here's the thing. You never, ever, ever decrease your goal. Once you set a goal, that becomes your new monthly goal over and over and over until you hit it. <laughs> Joy, Joy screwed. That becomes your new goal until you hit it. Once you hit it, now we increase to something bigger. Unless, in Joy's case, unless you get to a number that you are totally okay with because you know that kind of a number will 100% get you to reach your goals. But if the number you're hitting is not big enough to create the kind of momentum and results that you want, you just keep raising it until it gets to a level that you do want, and then you never stop hitting that number ever, ever, ever. You want to be the next Melissa McAllister? You hit the same kind of numbers over and over and over and over. And then what you do? You hire eight assistants and you travel the world and you hang out and you have a good time and continue hitting those numbers over and over and over. Now, see, here's the thing. You got to remember this. 
your limiting beliefs are going to try to hit you in the face over and over and over, just like they did. How many people do an 80 day obsession? Raise your hand. How many people, the first two weeks, your limiting beliefs were just punching you square in the face over and over and over and over? What'd you have to do? You had to fight through it, didn't you? You know why I love training beach body coaches? Because the same way you learned how to take a punch and keep going on your health and fitness journey is the same way you have to take a punch and keep on going in your business. And when you've done it in your health and fitness journey, you at least know what's coming and you at least know what it feels like and you at least know what it's like to push through that anyways. That's the exact same thing I'm challenging you to do. Every single week, every single month, you get up and you fight back until you get what you want. Now, if you need help with that, I would absolutely love to help you out. I have two different trainings. One is called the Art of Recruiting. One is called the Push Life Community. In the Art of Recruiting, I give you an entire business makeover. We actually did a big, huge four-hour workshop for it today. I teach you how to start conversations, how to start invites, how to post on social media to get engagement and to get people coming your way. I teach you how to plan out your day. I teach you how to do affirmations every single day. I make you write out your goals every day. And then I hold you accountable to doing all of those things every single day in my app. And I'm telling you, the app is freaking a game changer because if you do 85% of your activities in the app, we have a health bet pot that you get to win at the end of the month. There's something about the app combined with a health bet pot that helps people stay focused throughout the whole month. And I promise you, if you can put in the action, the results will show up. How many of you tell your challengers that every day? If you just put in the action, the results are going to show. Guys, your business is the same way. Now, if you don't decide to sign up for my trainings, that's totally okay. Okay? But I'm just telling you that if you need help, if you need someone to keep you accountable and help you stay consistent, you can go to joshuacoats.com. I'll type it right here for you. And then, Joy, if you want, you can always share it in the team page later, but no pressure. Go to joshuacoats.com. You can sign up for the Art of Recruiting or the Push Life community. Let me tell you this. If you don't sign up for my trainings, totally cool, but I want to give you a little bit of advice. Put yourself in some type of environment that holds you accountable to those goals you just set. Lock arms with three or four girls on your team. Lock arms with joy. Make sure that you are on every single team call. Make sure that you are at every single Super Saturday. Make sure you get your butt to Summit. If you are um, able to, show up for the event that I was speaking uh, at with Andrea Crowder, which is the power of I am. Make sure you take every opportunity you can to put yourself in an environment where you continue to grow, you continue to be challenged, and you keep showing up every day. All right? Thank you, Joy, for having me. I'll oh, my gosh. You. Thank you so much, Josh. That was amazing, as always. You're welcome. I'm so grateful for your time. I'm so grateful for your message and your push. And, yes, I literally did puke. <laughs> <laughs> so, good, 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 good. Anyway, we definitely will be posting the link in the team page, and I'm sure the other leaders on this call will also do the same. So we just want to say awesome. thank you for your time. This was amazing, and I hope everyone takes what you said and put it put it into practice for sure. You're more than welcome. Thanks for having me, Joy. I All appreciate right. it. Have a great night, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye.